Our basement space was lost to clutter and things we didn't really care about. This is the story of reclaiming it for our basement grocery store. It took me five years of living in our home with a very small pantry space, even though I have reclaimed some of the cabinetry in our home for pantry space, but we do have this pantry space in our actual pantry that has shelving that is very deep and not very functional. But it took me five years to realize that we could use our basement for additional space. So our basement is just steps away from our kitchen. You go through our mudroom and then you can go down into the basement. So it's very accessible from the kitchen. And for some reason, it just never occurred to me that I could store extra food down there. But once it did, I was very excited about the project. And we had a lot of steps along the way to get to the point of making it our very own basement grocery store. The first step was decluttering. I didn't document this mostly because like a lot of basements, well, at least I'm assuming a lot of basements, ours was full of clutter and I just needed to dig in and get that job done. This took I would say a couple of days. It's been a few months now since I did that portion of this job somewhere along the winter. I went down there. I found so many things that we haven't used for many seasons, something like seasonal decor that it's been years since I got out. I was able to declutter that. So many things, clothing that didn't fit the kids anymore. I just needed to go through it with a fine tooth comb because what I realized was when we first moved into this home, a lot of the things that I wasn't sure about and then over the years, things that I wasn't quite sure if we wanted to keep or get rid of, I stashed those things into the basement. And then I just had this mess on my hands. And whenever it occurred to me that I could actually redeem the space, that stuff didn't matter as much to me anymore. I saw that as something that I was storing and was never going to use, most likely because it hadn't been used in years. And instead I was having this very non-functional pantry upstairs that could be better just by getting rid of some things that I wasn't actually using. It's so funny how we do this. We trade the possibility of someday, maybe our ideal selves will put this to use or just something that we haven't even revisited at all. Sometimes it's not that I actually thought I would wanna use this. I just put it in the basement as a bit of a waiting room to make the decision later. And all of those push down the line decisions ended up in a very cluttered basement that wasn't being used for much. So what I had to do to get the basement ready for moving the food down there was first I picked up some shelving units to put in a different section of the basement where I could keep some of our stuff that I actually did wanna keep. So I grabbed two shelving units that each fit 10 small totes. I put everything that I wanted to keep into 20 totes put those up on those shelving units in a separate section of the basement. I also kept over there some paint for touching up the paint around the house, a couple of Christmas trees, a few air conditioners that we use in the cottage in the summertime, as well as a dehumidifier and some suitcases. That is it. There are no more storage areas in this house, although I was kind of thinking we could redeem the attic, but I bet if we did that, we would end up putting things up there that again, I would never actually see. I wanted to make this to where everything that I really will use in the future, I can access it very easily, I can see it, it's neat and organized, and so that will actually allow me to use those things and benefit from them. One of the most eye-opening things whenever you declutter a space is finding a whole bunch of items that you could have put to use over the last few years, but didn't even realize that you owned them. That happened to me a lot throughout the basement. There were things in there that I saw and I thought, oh, that would have been nice during this or this, but I just didn't even know I had it. I don't want that to happen. So that is why I ruthlessly decluttered this space. We just got back from vacation and there is something about coming home where your things are all set up like in the basement to have all of our food that we like, that I have carefully sourced neatly, displayed and organized. I also love the comfort of our home. And one way that I make our home comfortable 
and healthy is with Birch Living, which is the sponsor of today's video. Birch is a natural and organic mattress company that offers sleep products I can feel good about in our farmhouse. We have two of the twin Birch mattresses. Those are the natural, well-loved Birch mattresses. And then we also have a Queen Lux, which is a premium upgrade. The Lux is comprised of eight different layers of organic wool, organic cotton, and 100% natural latex. It also features an added quilted organic cotton pillow Euro top, natural Talalay latex that relieves pressure points, targeted zoned lumbar support provides enhanced contouring. This mattress has over 1,000 individually wrapped steel coils to cradle your body and limit motion transfer. All that to say it is super comfortable, but most of all, I love that I'm avoiding the off-gassing that can happen in the conventional manufacturing process of mattresses. That's the reason that so many years ago I switched to organic. We spend a third of our lives in bed, sometimes more if I lay there and watch a show before bed as well. And so it makes sense to make that space healthy, safe, and comfortable. The best part about all of this is that Birch delivers your mattress right to your door for free within the US. They also offer in-home setup and removal to make your buying experience as convenient as possible. With your Birch mattress, you get a 100 night sleep trial and a 25 year warranty so you can be sure that what you are investing in will last your family for many years to come. I love my Birch mattress and I know that you will too. If you are looking to upgrade your sleep, consider Birch. You can get 20% off your order plus two free eco rest pillows by using my link, birchliving.com forward slash farmhouse. It'll also be linked in the description box below. You can also grab this QR code right here to head straight to that page and check out Birch Living. I'll get into the food I brought down here and the rest of the making the pantry process. But one more thing that we did that you're not seeing here in this video that actually held this up for about a month is we got this wall and the wall behind me that you're not seeing right now, but you'll see whenever you see this little barn light that I turn on at some point, the wall re tuck pointed by a historical restoration guy. So this turned into a whole thing. We cleared everything out of here. We got the shelving. I found this at Sam's club. My mother-in-law sent me a link for this shelving. It's very industrial. It's very heavy. So it was perfect. We thought about building something, but this ultimately seemed like the easiest, most straightforward solution. Anyways, we got it put together. We got everything cleared out of here. And Luke said, you know what? Before we put all this food on these shelves, we should probably address the fact that some of the tuck pointing and the mortar is coming out between the stones in this 1860s foundation. So I got on a local Facebook group. I asked around, I got some people that said, yeah, I'll come do this really quick. But it turns out after getting educated by a historic guy, his whole job is doing historic restorations. He messaged me and said, you can get somebody out there quick, but they're probably just going to put regular mortar in there. And these old foundations are meant to breathe. I think that's how I understand it. So if I'm wrong, sorry, correct me if I'm wrong, but basically it will work for a while. It'll look good, but ultimately it will leak. It'll crack. It'll expand um, and not contract. And the mortar that was used a long time ago was made to breathe, expand, contract. I might be saying that wrong, but nonetheless, I trusted his opinion and we had him come, him and his family, it's a family business, do the tuck pointing. So you might notice a bit of a difference in the way that this stone foundation looks in the beginning of this video and then at this point in the video. So there's a month here in between, but I'm so glad we did it. I think it looks really nice. I think it'll preserve the integrity of this basement and make it last another, I don't know. I don't know how long it'll be before it has to be retuck pointed, but it has been here 150 years and there are certain parts of this foundation that we don't really think has been touched. So although this did delay the project a bit, I am glad that we were able to preserve the integrity of our foundation. And of course it looks so much better. I love the look of this old stone. Somebody suggested to me in the Facebook group that I was asking around for local contractors that we could cover it up. Like you could put, I forget how he said we could do it. But basically the stone wouldn't be showing anymore. And that of course was not gonna work because I think this is one of the neatest features. And I know this isn't about aesthetics, this is about storing food for our family. 
But whenever you have these old stone foundations to work with, of course, I wasn't going to let that go. For the food, I focused on things that we use all the time. Once I got everything up on the shelves, I realized how much more space I had, which is so interesting because in our pantry upstairs, having this amount of food feels very cluttered. Now I'm still keeping upstairs a couple of each thing, but I want to have this as a stockpile somewhere I can visit when we run out of ketchup or canned tomatoes, coconut oil, olive oil, canned beans, flour, bulk grains. I wanted to be able to run down here and get it and not clutter up the pantry with additional storage. And and I think this functions wonderfully for that. We'll see over time what we end up doing. Maybe there'll be some things I'll want to bring back upstairs in higher quantities, but I'm just getting a feel for this. And I know that over time I will be able to figure it out. Also, we have in one corner of the basement bulk grain buckets with the gamma lids, which those are the screw on and off lids, which make them really easy to access. I picked all of the 50 pound bags up from Azure Standard. We have rye, einkorn, spelt, kamut, hard white wheat. I am just leaving those lined up on that wall. I thought about putting them underneath a table or under a curtain, but ultimately whenever I come down here, that will be the easiest way to go over there and access them and use them in my everyday baking needs. I found these plastic containers with the red lids from Websterant, I believe it's called. It was one of the restaurant stores online. I love them. They seal, they look really nice and clean and organized. A lot of things I just left in the original containers. I found this off of VMAT Home. It's a six foot by nine foot vinyl mat. This is just to make the space more inviting. Yes, it's a basement. Yes, it's strictly for function but I also want it to be beautiful and I know that I'll be coming down here a lot. Now the third storage shelf that I'm not showing as much, I'm using that just for things like extra canning jars, rings, lids, my canning pot, my cheese press, things I don't use every day so they shouldn't clutter up the pantry, but also things I don't wanna get rid of. There's lots of extra space too on these shelves so there's more things I could stock up on. We reserved this wall over here with the light for a table and our freeze dryer. I didn't yet get that table but that's something that I'm gonna do in the future. This little switch here hooks up to a plug-in so it turns on our string lights, makes it cozy and inviting and well lit. I love this space. I hope that you enjoyed following along and there'll be lots more shots of this in the future. So make sure to hit that subscribe button. As always, thank you so much for stopping by our farmhouse.